Hello, everyone. This is Eric from Etiquette, back for another live stream. Welcome. If you're new here or if you're just there, put your name in the comments down below. Tell me where you're from. This is a live stream for teachers. And uh, so if you've got any questions about teaching or especially teaching English, um, please uh, let me know. I'll, I'll try my best to answer them as, as well as possible. Um, yeah, my name is Eric. I've been a teacher for a while now. And every Sunday, I do this live stream where we talk about teaching. Now, what you would notice is that actually this live stream is on the main channel, Etiquette English Teachers. It's on Facebook and it's on YouTube. But I'm also putting it on the second channel, which is for English learners called uh, the Best English Learning Channel. So I'm, uh, I'm running it on both channels. If you want to, uh, I'd appreciate it if you watch it. I put the link in the in the description below. If, uh, if possible, could you watch it on the best English learning channel? Because I'm trying to, to boost that channel a little bit because I need the watch time on there. So it's a little bit of an experiment. But anyway, if, if you'd like to, I'd appreciate that. But let's get started. And here's my dad. He says, hello, everyone. It's a sunny day in the mo most southern parts of Africa. Yeah, today. So I live in South Korea. And yesterday was almost like a summer's day. You could go out, out in the evening. It was so nice and warm. Uh, spring just started. But then today was so cool. It was cloudy. It was overcast. And uh, so, yeah, two drastically different days. We've got Bonnie Esther. Hey, from Massachusetts, USA. Nice haircut. Thank you very much, Bonnie Esther. Yeah, I knew you guys would say something about it. Um, I'm very happy for the haircut. Uh, I know some people like it, some people don't. Uh, for me, it's just hair. It'll grow back. I really don't mind. Yasin, hello from Morocco. Matilda, hi, Eric. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, had a nice day yesterday with friends. And today, also a really good day. So, um, yeah, all in all, very go going going swimmingly. <laughs> Siobhan, hi, Eric. And Rose, you're so kind. Yeah, what was it? Uh, Happy International Women's Day for a couple of days ago. I didn't post anything. Uh, it's it's one of those days that kind of skip me by. I should really make a note of all these big, important days. Noor, good to see you. Daljeet, hi. Eddie Agu, uh, I, I, Muhammad, I'm going to say Muhammad. Welcome. It's so nice to have you back. A, same for you too. Long time no see. Good to have you back. How have you been? From Kurdistan. Very interesting. Good to meet you. And hello, Eric. So nice to see you live. Yeah, guys, if you want to talk about anything, please let me know. Um, yeah, I, sh I should definitely think of some topics to talk about in the future. Uh, I just do these live streams and chat to you guys. So if you've got anything, if there's anything on your mind, let me know and uh, we can discuss it. Murari, annyeong haseyo. That's how you say hello in Korean. Uh, Jackie, good to see you. Good morning. Hope you slept well. Uh, Pamela, good morning. I'm Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Good to meet you. Uh, checking out the best. So uh, the, the best English learning channel, it's a secondary channel I made because I had a lot of content that I think is more suitable for English learners. And I'm going to put some more content on there. But so I, I'm going to make some more videos. I've also got some friends that will also put out videos on there specifically for English learners, because I do get a lot of questions about from from English learners on this channel. So I thought I'd, I'd start up with the next channel, you know, put some content out there. Uh, it's 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 a work in progress. I'm putting out a video each week, just like with this channel. Uh, actually, today I finished editing the video for Tuesday on this channel. I think it's going to be a really good one. It's called 10 Memory Games, uh, the, uh, 10 Memory Activities that you can use uh, play with your students. Uh, it's going to be a fun uh, a fun video uh, that will come out on Tuesday for me. Tuesday, what is it? Tuesday night, so Tuesday morning for, for you guys if you're in the, sta in, in the Americas. Um, and then oh, what else? And then after that, two weeks later, I'm going to use that and I'm bringing out a compilation video of 300 classroom games. I think that's going to be a big one, almost four hours long. I've also shot video. So on Friday, I shot some video. It's uh, 10, uh, what was it? 10 techniques to improve memory. Since I was, I was uh, researching topics for, uh, I was researching how to improve memory and how we as teachers can help our students with their working memories. Um, I, I, I made three separate videos, the activities video, 
10 techniques to improve memory or, or ways to, to um, memorize things. And then the last one is how to give instructions uh, uh, how to give instructions to, to help students remember things better. Esther, good vibes. Hi, Farag, hello. Uh, Jula, good to see you. Megdalaya, okay, I didn't know it was there. Cambodia, maybe C Cambodia. <laughs> hi, Sam. Uh, Muddy, hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, hello, how are you doing from Angola? So cool. Huda from Syria. Ramesh, good to see you again. Muddy, hi, Eric. <laughs> Uh, hello, all teachers from around the world. You are heroes. Hey, that's my account. How did I do that? I think it might be my dad doing something there. Wow, very interesting. Thanks, Dad, if if that's you. Otherwise, I think I've got another personality running my own channel. <laughs> Ramesh from India. Where in India are, are you from? Um, I, I'm talking, I've got a friend in Delhi. So uh, I have been talking... Um, to uh, teachers there too. Uh, Sam, Cambodia, there we go. Yusenbeck, what should I do if my students are older than me? Well, yeah, we've all had um, older students. I actually, I made some videos about how to teach adults. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, respect goes both ways. So obviously, if they're older, you're going to be more respectful, more polite to them. But th they should also understand that uh, you are there to help them. And that uh, you've got, you've got, you're an expert. You're, you're, you're going to help them in whatever you're going to try and teach them, if it's English or if it's another subject. So it, you have to work with them like that. Actually, I had a really nice comment on on the how to to how to teach um, how to teach adults. I had a really nice comment. Let me quickly read it to you. Uh, I appreciate. I still, I think that I, uh, I don't. Th oh, thank you so much for this content. I learned a lot. God bless. That was so nice. Yeah, I'll quickly go in there because it's a, uh, and I'll share that video with you, teaching adults. Actually, I did two videos. The one was 10 activities for adults. And then the other one was how to teach adults. So uh, which one do you want? Do you want the, do you want the how to teach adult learners? I'm going to give you how to teach adult learners, although teaching adults, the activities, it's, it's a bit more popular than that one, but I'll share how to teach adult learners with you. Uh, I still need to make the video for how to teach uh, how to teach uh, children, how to teach kids. It's something that's on my mind constantly, but I've got so many so many videos that I still need to make. Okay, here we go. How to teach adults. I'm going to post that for you. Uh, base principles for teaching writing about teenagers. Jawan, I think yeah, I, uh, we talked about writing. Uh, obviously, you want to set them up for success. You want to. Um, you want to start slowly um, by getting them to write smaller things. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that they understand the structure of the writing, the purpose of the writing. Uh, I've made videos about it in the past, but I'm not so good at just talking about it right now. I, um, but yeah, I did a video on how to, uh, what was it, 10 writing activities. And then I also share some, some tips for writing. Yeah, so uh, you want to make it fun. You want to make it relatable so that students actually get into writing. I think that the difference between the difference between teaching, speaking and writing is that it's it's more difficult to get students motivated to write. You know, I think there are a few students that actually really enjoy it. Like for students, um, you can you can teach them reading, you know, because they know it's a valuable skill, and they they get an if if they read a book that they enjoy, they 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 really find enjoyment in it. And speaking, they understand that speaking is important. They can understand that you know they have to practice their listening to to understand people. But when it comes to writing, I think that's the one where it's it's more important to try and motivate your students to really get into it. So you've got to be smart in the way that you. That you that you get them to write and go away. Let me do this. Okay, let me quickly. Uh, I I made two videos on writing. The one was an activity. One activity I did with another great professor called uh, it's a writing activity. And then I did a video ten writing activities for English class. Uh, it it gives you some some uh, like I give tips in it and I also give ten writing activities. I'll quickly share the link with you. Da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, I'm going a little bit slow today, but I have to say it's so nice to be back. Uh, I've um, uh, I've had the the live streaming festival, and I've I've been away, so now it's it's coming. It's it's so nice to be back. 
Uh, him dot. Oh, wait. Let me get to it. Where are we? I'm so slow. Uh, da, 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 da. How do you deal with time pressure in the classroom? Great question, Ka uh, uh, Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> uh, yeah, so time. Uh, I think time management is vitally important for teachers because you've got things you want to accomplish in class within a uh, within a set of time. You know, you've only got a limited time with your students. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, you've got limited time with your students. So first of all, um, planning. You've got to plan out your lessons. You've got to you've got to establish how much time you need to do what you need to do, and you, you need to focus on it. Uh, so if 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 you're struggling with getting everything done, this should be your priority. And you can even share that with your students. You can say, "Listen, guys, uh, we're running behind in our uh, in our lessons. I know it's fun, but we're going to have to pick up the pace." So you're going to time your activities. You're going to say, okay, well, this is going to be five minutes. This is going to be 10 minutes. This is five minutes. And yeah, be be strict with yourself with how you do it. There's another word. Be disciplined with how you apply your time in the classroom. Also, um, sorry for all the ums. You're going to want to give yourself some time towards the end. So if you need more time, Rather plan your lesson so that you've got five minutes at the end to kind of catch up if, if you're running late. I think that's very important. Now, you me you mentioned time pressure. So I think that the biggest problem for you is that you don't have enough time. And that's actually, that's, I, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to, I, I would rather not have enough time and, and rush to finish something rather than having too much time and the students get bored and rowdy. So I, I think you've got to be, uh, there's a part of you that has to say, listen, I'm actually happy that I've got all this work to do with my students, you know, that we've got so much to do. And then, you know, now it's just up to you to plan and utilize your time effectively. Uh, Muhammad, I would like to attend the whole live, but I am obliged to quit at half past two for some preoccupations, but I should download the session. Of course, go ahead. You can download it. I mean, that's what you can do. If you've got YouTube premium, premium, you can download it too. And also the live stream will always be on the channel. Actually, I just realized so uh, a while ago, what, more than a month ago, when the, the channel was hacked, six weeks, two months ago, the channel was hacked. And what they did was they, they unlisted all the videos. So I had to go in manually and make all the videos public again. And I only realized last week that all my old live streams have been privated. Now I have to go through a hundred live streams and and un uh, make them all public again. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing. Uh, and it will be absolutely thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I started the channel and um, it's just to get the ball rolling. I've got a, a lot of great ideas for things that I would like to do, especially for English learners. But uh, now I'm just putting out a video a week and. Um, and uh, just getting the channel going. Namaste. Please advise how to start teaching small kids with small sentences. Yeah, so small sentences, that means that you've you've already gone through the phonics and you, you've you taught them, you know, uh, all the, the, the basic words that they need to know. So now they've got, so, so you've got to make sure that the students are able to write that they know their ABCs, <laughs> they, they, they know some basic, some sight words, they know how to write at, at least, you know, um, um, some longer words too. So they know how to spell. Now you're going to want to teach them, slowly but surely, you're going to want to teach them how to write sentences. Um, yeah, just um, uh, use visual aids to, to construct sentences. So you're going to want to have like a toy rabbit and a carrot. And you're going to see, oh, what is the rabbit doing? Ra the rabbit eat the carrot. Okay. So then you, you're going to let them write down these small sentences. Yeah. So make it visual, uh, use these things. And then you can I, just off the top of my head, maybe have like, um, let's say 10 sentences you want them to write and you just show them the pictures, the, the carrots, uh, the, the, the rabbits and the carrot. You say, okay, okay. Write a sentence for this. And they're like, that way they can they can be creative and write it too. But obviously you want to give them a lot of examples to use too for writing sentences. I haven't taught, um, uh, I've taught phonics before, but I think when it comes to 
when's the last time I taught writing to that stage of learners? It's it's weird. Sometimes you kind of skip a level where you don't teach that. And uh, I can't remember a time where I got them to, you know, most of them have had some experience writing. So, yeah, it's interesting. That's the way I would go about it is motivate them um, the right way. And then also, um, well, scaffold and make it easy for them to understand and to write. Take it slowly. Don't push too fast. So ra I would uh, I would err on the side of caution and rather rather make sure that they understood everything and go through. Renid, good to see you. Good mor morning, good people. I agree. Everyone here is so good. Thank you so much for joining, everyone. Punsan, uh, Punson from Laos, Luza Ang, Buenos Dias. Hello, everyone. Wishing everyone a great day. It is m early morning over there. Luza Ang, I hope you're having a lovely day. I love your profile picture. Looks so beautiful in that. Um, I hope you're doing well. Murari, hi, Eric. I'm from Nepal. Teaching reading is a very big challenge. Um, yeah, so reading, I think just with like the writing one, with the reading one, I actually, I have a, this video is one of the first, I think, so I started making these list videos, how to teach, how to read, uh, oh, uh, how to read, how, how, how to teach writing, how to teach reading. And I made this reading video a long time ago, but it's one of those videos I'm really proud of because uh, I put a lot of effort into it and I think uh, I did a good job explaining, but you'll see in the editing isn't very good. And as always, I complain about this, uh, the, this, um, the sound quality, but um, um, 50 reading activities. Uh, it's 20 minutes long. And actually the first five minutes, I just talk about teaching reading to our students. So I'll put this in the comments below. You can check it out. I'm, I'm just posting video <laughs> to get through. Uh, Christina, hi from Colombia. A frozen and wet day. Yeah, it's, it's a strange day. It was so hot yesterday. But yeah, spring's coming. We just have to wait. I love teaching English for beginners. Yeah, um, you know, I, I love teaching younger learners also, you know, all, even older learners that are learning, um, or that are also beginners. It's, uh, you know, you get so much from that. There's a word I wanted to say. Yeah, so um, it's, it's so good because the, the thing is, when you you teach beginners, they, 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 um, they improve much quicker obviously, you know, so uh, when you first start learning something, there's so much for you to learn. So it's like, wow, you're, you're going to learn so much. And then, you know, once you level up, uh, once you become more advanced, there's, it's more difficult to see that big jump in, uh, in improvement. So the, the, the beautiful thing about teaching beginners is that you can notice and they also feel how they improve very quickly and then later you get the drop off so i think that's also one of the things i enjoy about it bm hi my love why do you cut your head now you are not handsome bm i i don't know i can just do what i can do but i, I like the short hair you don't like it i, I know it's not it's not everyone's cup of tea but uh, i enjoy the the shorter hair um except i i, I I phoned my dad. It was his birthday, 10th of March. I was actually, I was contemplating putting a photo of him and my mom on the community page to say happy birthday, but then I decided against it. And I just put it on my social media on Instagram and where else? Oh, on my Facebook. Mm, but so I called my dad and my mom and, and they're like, oh, Eric, we're, we love that your hair is so short again. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And then my mom said, Eric, you've got so many wrinkles. You should stop frowning. I said, yeah, it's a bit late for that now. You know, not many people, you know, win that fight against aging. You know, unfortunately, Father Time is um, is undefeated. So, yeah, it's just one of those things we, we've got to get used to. I'm, I'm not going to look 30 forever. You know, it's, it's, I'm going to hit 40 very soon. Pamela. Talk about keeping the kids engaged and behaved. Yeah, um, actually, I, I I still need to make that video. I'm constantly thinking about how to teach kids. Yeah, so with kids, I think I've said it before a while ago, but so with kids, you you want to, how to keep them engaged is, you know, to keep them on their toes by changing activities, by having activities that, that are fun and get them to, well, engage with the lesson more. Uh, and behave, engaged and behave. That's interesting, both of those together. Um, yeah, so you're going to start your class. You're going to have a mix of activities. You're going to have some fun, lively activities that um, like games or 
you know, TPR activities where they can move around or, you know, th that they're challenged with like group or team games, you know, or fun flashcard games that they really enjoy. They learn, but they also enjoy. And then you're going to mix in periods of where you actually teach them or where they write or where they practice. And then you're going to bring it up again. You're going to cro uh, you're going to make it fun again. And then they need that time to relax and also do feedback. So I think that's very important is to, um, you know, transition between activities very quickly because don't just have 10 minutes. I think ideally your activities should be five to 10 minutes where they do something and then switch and switch because they've got a short attention span. If you let them work for too long, it's it's going to be so boring. So you you do want to mix up the activities and and uh, have uh, and and a way for you to control their energy. I think a lot of a lot of teachers they, they think you know students are misbehaving, but it's actually they they can't sit still and they can't just focus for that long. So then they start acting out, and then you start getting strict and and you scold them, and then they dislike you, and then they act out because th they don't like you anymore. So you've got to be strict, but you've also got to understand that you've got to make it fun and interesting for them. So yeah, mix up activities, have fun games and things for them to do. And then also, uh, I would uh, I would also say with young students, seven to eight, I would say have a lot of chance to use with them. There, there, there's a website, uh, there's a YouTube channel called Super Simple Songs. And then the, the, the kids start, you know, start teaching them a chant a week right? And revisit the chants um, um, occasionally. So I would teach the students maybe five chants, uh, four chants. So each week, teach them a different chant and then replay the, the older chants too, so that they, they do the movements and they sing along. And you can, you can use those at the start of class. And then, you know, when you feel like the, the students are bored or they start acting out, play that chant and let them, let them work out their frustrations. And then once they're done with that, let them sit down. So yeah, have fun, engaging games, act, active games, have chance and uh, and um, uh, challenging games where they play in teams and things like that. You've really got to do that. Uh, I'd, I'd love to make that video. I know I need to make that video, but my plan now for the channel is I need to have enough content. Um, so I've got these videos coming out about memory, and then I'm going to do a series on how to teach for tests, uh, specifically IELTS and TOEIC. Um, so I'm TOEIC, yeah, TOEIC, uh, yeah, TOEIC. And then, so I'm going to make those videos based on reading, listening, um, general tips. Uh, it's going to be a long series, but I need to make that series. It'll probably last for three. It'll run for if I had to guess two to three months. And then, while I've got those two to three months, I can work on the 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 less the the course on 30 lessons so that's what i want to do once that is done and i'm happy and it's complete then i can totally just focus on how to teach phonics and how to teach kids although i know i should make that earlier hello james good to see you how have you been uh, it's almost spring so I, I've, I've seen some cherry blossoms around it's it's going to be a beautiful spring i feel him dad hi teachers are superheroes definitely Oh, guys, I'm so slow. I'm like 20 minutes behind speaking activities for teens. I've got 100. Well, I've got so many speaking activities. And so in two weeks, I'm going to release that video with 300 classroom games. And most of them are speaking activity. It's going well. Thank you. Do you dream to teach low achievers? <laughs> um, Take out low achievers. And I would say yes. You know, I was thinking about it a couple of days ago, BM, where I was thinking, you know, I enjoy I enjoy teaching, but my my passion would be to work with teachers because, you know, now I'm just talking to you guys and these are just ideas that I have, you know, things that I want to share. But if I could start working with um, teachers in the future, I, I would love that because then I can work with younger teachers and I can, I can kind of see what works and what doesn't work. You know, um, uh, I'd love to be in the field and work with teachers like that. Um, right now, I've, I've just got the channel and I share activities and some some classroom management tips and and uh, and the like but i and so the and the people i work with are you know they're university professors so they've been in the game for a long time but i would love to go and work with new teachers 
um, you know, just to just to share with them and to to see what they do and, and see how I can help them. I would love that. How to teach uh, someone who doesn't uh, know any English at all? Yeah, you're going to have to use a lot of flashcards. Um, and you're going to want to. Uh, so uh, you said someone who doesn't know any English at all. So I believe that you're not talking about a, a, a young learner because uh, otherwise you would have just said someone who's very young doesn't know English who has to start. So you're probably talking about a teen or an adult, right, James? So perhaps, um, yeah, you, you're going to want to use a lot of flashcards and you also want to use the experience. Fortunately, they've got life experience. And then, um, you, you know, when you use these flashcards and these, you, you can also, you know, they probably know how to write and to read. And then you're going to take it from there, just do exercises where they start putting their, you know, starting to put it all together. Uh, you're also, uh, I think the, uh, what's important if you do teach adults and you want to get quick results, you want to also teach them valuable things that they, they feel are useful. Like um, uh, take, uh, let's say they're Korean, you're going to take some common Korean phrases they, that they use every day and you're going to give them the, the English equivalent, uh, the English, well, not translation, but the equivalent in English so that they know, ah, oh, this is what it is in in Korean, but this is how I'm going to say it in, in English. So they are going to feel that growth and how they improve and they're going to feel like it's useful. So uh, I think that's what you want to do, you know, so use images, help them construct and use the language, help them write. And then uh, how uh, uh, from the writing, you can also teach them some, some grammar, but you, you're going to want to focus on the speaking because I bet you that most adults have already learned a lot of grammar when they were young, but they haven't had a chance to actually uh, use it. So that's what you want to do. You want them to get to use it. And then also, um, like I said, um, teach them uh, useful terms, I think. H.D. Albert. Hi, once more. I'm an English teacher as well. So what dictionary? I have no idea. I haven't used the dictionary in ages, uh, to be honest, Albert. Um, I, I think most dictionaries are probably the same, but I mean, I mean with the internet, it's 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 not that necessary anymore. Um, I mean, I'm sure people use it for, for some activities and some reasons or just to have in class in, in case you don't want the students to have their phones with them. Uh, um, but I, I don't know. They're, they're, um, I, I don't really use dictionaries at all. Uh, anybody else feel that way or uh, disagree? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's very interesting. Uh, good question, though. I don't think I've heard that before. Hello, could you tell us how to make... Inst oh, this is tough. Instructional design. Esther, I'm not going to be able to help you. This is uh, instructional design. Oh, no, wait. I'm going to skip this one. I'll think about it. I'll try and answer it next week. I'm going to skip that one now. Josenberg, thank you. Jimmy Ma, uh, can you suggest a textbook? No, I haven't. I haven't been able to suggest any books. Um, that's one of the, the things I've shied away from because, man, um, so for my semester, this semester, uh, we get recommended books that we have to do with our students in a curriculum. And sometimes we just get books that are horrible. You know, the, the activity, too many activi activities that aren't very good. You know, I, I think too much info information, too little information, not the right kind of information. And then, you know, so I, I feel like it's very difficult for me to to share what what textbooks I actually enjoy. I don't want to promote anything that, you know, you might not feel is useful. So my suggestion is go to a bookshop or, you know, uh, go online, look at some of these books and see which ones, you know, suit your needs the best. Uh, uh, Srini Basan from India. Hi, Faraz. Uh, how are you? I have a question. Must I talk in Arabic only? Hmm. Um, that is a way that a lot of people, uh, a lot of people recommend teaching that way. Uh, the natural, uh, the, the approach where you only use the language you're teaching. So if you're teaching English, only English in the class. And they say that's effective. Um, for myself, I'm a bit more lenient. I, I, I don't mind too much using a little bit of Korean in class and also to explain things quickly. And the students, it also, you know, it helps the students to focus too and to understand things. So I would say it's up to you. Um, uh, uh, most people suggest that the less uh, Arabic you use, the better. Yeah, that, that's what I would say. The less, uh, the, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't strictly say no native language, but I would, I would try and uh, aim for 
the least amount possible. Salim, hi. Uh, good evening uh, from Sudan. Uh, Laura, uh, hi. Regards from Mexico, speaking and writing activity. Yeah, I, I've got lots of speaking and writing activities. I shared some in the comments now. Difficult to, uh, language mechanics, Lexus, definitely. What's up? I'm good, thank you. I realize that writing also poses lots of concentration and your thoughts to put down. And then children mostly worry about the spelling at the time too. Uh, and, uh, you know, with writing for myself too, it's it's difficult to get into. A lot of people don't understand, you know, you have to get into like this writing mode. So, you know, you can you can teach them, what is that, the Parabello, the per what is that, <laughs> Pareto, the, is it the Pareto? Let me see, Pareto principle. Okay, no, that's that's something else. Well, what is the one where uh, you you study for twenty minutes? So what I would do, you know, I would tell my students, I would I would prepare them and also tell them, guys, listen. Uh, sometimes it's tough to get into that flow mode, into that zone where you can just write and and it feels natural. So you want to slowly to get, get them into it. So you're going to want to tell them, listen, guys, sometimes it's difficult to, to just write and to be creative. So get them to write some easy things first, you know, just to get into writing. And then you can also say, OK, so I'm going to have the clock here. We're going to write for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, you're going to just sit down and write. And then we're going to take a break. And I'm going to ask you a little bit about your writing. And that also, it, it, it prepares the students for, for like, okay, so I'm going to have to write for 10 minutes. I'm not going to talk to my friends. I'm only, it's only going to be me, my notebook and my pencil. I'm going to, I only need to focus for these 10 minutes and then I, I can relax. And then they understand, okay, well, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to, because if, if you, if you tell someone, okay, you, you need to write, it's just like, oh, okay, I need to, no, well. It's difficult to, to concentrate. But if you say, okay, well, you've got 10 minutes. You've got to focus on this task. Okay, 10 minutes. Let's go. I, I would try that with my students too, is to give them like a limit like that. And then after 10 minutes, they're like, actually, now they're in a flow mode and they, they do want to continue. So by that time, you're walking around and you're checking in on your students and maybe now they're writing and they're really into it. And then you don't necessarily need to stop them, but you could and say, okay, guys, let's take some feedback. What did you write about? And uh, that also gives you a chance to walk around and see what the common mistakes are that they, that they make. And then you can share those mistakes with the students or actually give them some, some um, vocabulary they could, they could perhaps use or give them some, some pointers in their writing. I think that's a nice idea. I haven't shared that before, but um, you guys are here live, so you just got that idea. Um, uh, I'm teaching high school. Oh, I love teaching high school students. Planning is a prerequisite, but teachers expect what is unexpected. So be ready for improvisation. Well said, Muhammad. I totally agree. Yeah, so prepare for the unexpected and be ready to improvise. I, I think, yeah, that 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 skill of improvising, I would say that it comes down to experience, but that's not necessarily true. I've seen many fantastic teachers that are new to the profession. They, they think on their toes. They're like, oh, let's do it this way. So, But I think you do get better with, with experience when it comes to, uh, you know, things happening unexpectedly, and then you've got to roll with the punches. Uh, Siobhan, I get it. Thank you. Can you suggest best online ESL games with one-on-one -on -one classes with kids and Teenagers, yes, Jamima. I've done so many videos on teaching um, uh, activities. I, I put out a video with thirty uh, activities for teaching one on one, and most of those could be done online too. Uh, the I also enjoy using LiveWorksheets.com, where you can just whatever topic you're teaching, you just go in there and you can share it with the students, and they can fill it out. You can actually send them a link. And then, but the game, um, I haven't used it in a, a long time because I haven't taught online for a while. But uh, I, I like to use uh, Bamboozle. Bamboozle is a website where you can uh, create some of these games on your own or you can use the, the games that they already have. If you run out of time, you can just throw in a bonus English language game. Definitely. That's what you need to do. I have 30 minutes for a virtual demo. Which topics do you suggest I tackle? Oh, it's so tough. Actually, uh, Bronwyn, 
Uh, nice to meet you. N nice to see you again. Um, I, I actually, I did a video where I had to do a live lesson. Um, it, it's so tough. Oh, which topics? I think take a basic topic that you're really well versed with and you've got some fun activities that you can show. And I would suggest going with that. I have done something, what was it, a video lesson, demo lesson? I, I did like a long time ago. But in that case, they actually gave me something to work from and I created my own lesson. But find your best possible lesson, especially one with activities that's fun and can show the, the best side of you and teach that. Uh, Muhammad, best way to teach grammar to young learners? Uh, well, yeah, just, I don't want to say just teach them grammar. Um, slowly and give them examples. Um you know, if you're going to teach them present perfect or, or whatever you want to teach them, you know, um, take it slowly, give them fun examples and make it useful to them. Um, yeah, I think is the best uh, slowly, but uh, definitely expose them to grammar and get them to work on it. Uh, I can't give like an exact answer. <laughs> like I'm thinking how to, have I made a video how to teach grammar? No, I haven't done it yet. But my plan is with this course is to show exactly how I would teach certain uh, grammar points and then also specific activities for the grammar and how I would teach it. Yeah, I think, um, and also some resources for it. Uh, okay, how far behind? <laughs> okay, I'm at 14. I'm 20 minutes behind. So sorry, everyone. Hello, Inkar. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Muhammad is uh, okay. Yeah. I Emmy, hi from Indonesia, Apakabad. Ramesh, uh, we are getting good on this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, Ramesh, that's kind of difficult. Maybe in the future, I'll, I'll consider it, you know, um, getting people to join for a Zoom call. Maybe. I'll think about it. Manyao, good evening from Myanmar. Thank you so much. Lama from Jordan. Hi. Gabriel, Gabby from Indonesia. Wow, more Indonesian. So nice. Mina, I'm not a native speaker and I started learning English lately. Please, how can I improve my pronunciation skill and speaking skills? By speaking more and also uh, finding a role model to copy. You know, if you if there, if there's an actor or a, a news um anchor that that you you like the way that they speak try and um repeat but they record what they say and then try and repeat it the same way to improve your pronunciation um yeah and then you're speaking you're just going to want to practice as much as possible joining a group finding someone to practice with the best way to pr improve your english is to get a teacher though because then they can can fix the mistakes you make the the small mistakes you make when when you're speaking and it, it'll also be a good teacher that gets you to talk i think that's the best way is to find a teacher online and doing that i'm winning the war against aging james i think you are i think you're you're going to look fantastic forever i'm sure you you're one of those guys with the genetics that just keeps you young I don't know. I'm going to turn into a potato soon, but I have been going to the gym, so I'm I'm trying to take care of my body. Except I I had McDonald's uh, for dinner tonight, so you know you you lose some and you lose some. So yeah, but uh, I'll try and go to the gym tomorrow again. I'm a I'm a bit exhausted from last night, but we'll try our best. Hi from the Philippines. Actually, I saw someone close to Cebu. What what was that? Uh, there, there was this beautiful waterfall where people were swimming. I forgot the name. I was looking at it up yesterday. When was it? Let me quickly look. Uh, let me quickly go into the map. I saw it earlier. It was um, so. I was thinking. So for summer, I actually I, I'd love to go to Europe. I haven't. Yeah, it's close to Boho. What was that? Sigurdjord. Sigurdjord. Uh, I'm not saying it right. I know it's some. Okay. Someone tell me how to, how do I pronounce it? Sikwejord. It's it's this beautiful place with waterfalls where people swim inside. So uh, I saw uh, one of my friends there, and I really want to go there. <laughs> I know BM. I make so many promises. You 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 you're going to have to forget all the promises I make because <laughs> otherwise, you know, it's not going to end well for me. And well, I think the biggest promise I've made that I failed to deliver on is the one about how to teach young learners. I'd love to make that video, but I've got to make the demo lessons first. Well, the demo lessons, I have made demo lessons before, but I think specifically how to teach grammar and things. Uh, Gabriel, near look. Uh, yeah, thank you. Kanteng, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Helen, um, hello. Uh, Jessa, uh, what to do if your students are not listening and making the D finger? 
I'm 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 nervous to ask what the D finger is. The the, the middle finger? The the D finger. No, I I don't know. <laughs> I can only think it's the middle finger. Um, yeah, so obviously you're going to want to have a talk with your students. You've got rules in the classroom, but if uh, students are acting out that bad, you're going to want to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to want to remind them of uh, the rules in the class and you, uh, whatever punishments that you have available to you, if it's detention, uh, you can do something like that. You, you can, if you threaten them uh, by saying you want to say they, uh, see their parents, I wouldn't even threaten them. I would just say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to send a message to your parents. I would like to talk to them because I'm a bit worried about you. So never do, uh, when you punish your students, you know, so if they act out, you're going to warn them and you're going to say, listen, there are rules. You, uh, you, you never want to do it uh, from a place of anger because, you know, they, they're going to test you. They're doing these things to get a reaction out of you because uh, maybe they're just having fun. Uh, and uh, they're bored in class, so they, they find other ways to to act out. Maybe they don't get a lot of attention at home. Maybe there, there are some problems. Whatever it is, you need to have uh, rules in your classroom and boundaries. You want to have some procedures for them to know exactly what is expected of them. And, um, you know, when they break those rules, warn them. And then after that, you've got to punish them, whatever the punishment is that you have to have. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to come down, and then you also want to work on your relationship um, with with the class as a whole, but also with those um, those notorious students. So yeah, um, I think I, I did a video on classroom management. Uh, I think I, one video I, I've been dying to make too is attention getters because I see in the algorithm. Uh, I don't rank for anything on uh, attention getters, so I definitely need to get attention with that video. I'll, I'll make that video soon enough. It shouldn't be too difficult. Um, Marta, <laughs> I went by without saying hello. Hi, Marta. How are you doing? It's always so nice. She sent me a very lovely message for my dad saying happy birthday. Uh, I'm, I'm still on time. Never late. Always on time. Sonia from Italy. I'm really... I'm thinking about visiting Italy in the summer. I'm, I'm considering it. So I've got lots of plans. I don't know if, I, if I'll have the money for anything, but, uh, you know, we can dream, can't we? Jessa, uh, nice video. Thank you so much. I, I hope so. New teacher. Excellent. So happy to have you. I've got so many videos I still need to make. Uh, I love teaching English. Uh, will be, uh, no, I don't think so. You know, uh, the, the beauty of the world is that there are many languages, many different people, and... Um, I think some of us might learn um, learn Chinese, like John Cena. I know he speaks Chinese, uh, but no, I think um, I think you know for generations people have been learning English as as a second language, and you know the lingua franca, how we communicate with other speakers, and and for uh, um, in most cases English is used not by native speakers but between non-natives communicating with each other, you know? So I don't think Chinese is going to take over anytime soon, uh, but it, it might grow, definitely. Uh, how to teach a kid who has GDD? He can't talk. Hmm. GDD. I have no idea what GDD is. GDD. Hmm. Autism. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Uh, it is, um, it's a spectrum disorder. Okay, young and behind. Uh, and GD, uh, okay, let's see. Global development delay, very interesting. Hmm, okay. Uh, delay multiple, okay, so slow in development and they've got some problems, especially with, um, with uh, can't talk. Any activities? Yeah, I think, you know, with, with these students, um, don't just put them apart from uh, the other students. Have ways of interacting with them and for them to have, uh, have a way to express themselves too. So, if he can't speak, then find other ways that you can get them to interact. You know, if it's drawing something, if it's if it's um, using some signs. Actually, I've I wanted to make a, a video on like some signs that you can use in class. I had this I had this talk with the sign. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, yeah, so have ways for them to express themselves if they can't speak. You know, um, let them draw things, let them write, let them act things out, you know, but definitely keep them part of class. I think that's a nice question. I, I don't know any activities at the moment. I have made a video on TPR activities. 
that they can use. I also, uh, uh, there's this fun um, uh, activity that's like Simon Says, where you can, you, uh, th this is actually one of the memory activities where you write different le numbers on the board and, and write down act uh, actions that they have to do uh, with the corresponding letters. So it would be like, uh, you know, left arm up, right arm up, sit down, come up, turn around, you know? And so you write down these numbers and you call them out, one, five, seven, four, and then the students have to act it out. And then you can also, later you can swap some of the actions and you can you can erase it all together so that they remember these things. So that's really fun. I, I like ideas like that. So yeah, do um, activities like that for them to learn. Liesl, good to see you. Uh, do you have any uh, links to web pages with nice? Um, well, uh, free. Um, so I go to, what is it called again? Um, I think for posters, Twinkle. Uh, so Twinkle is that website that has a lot of, uh, I've made so many videos for them where they've got lots of posters and they also have lots of worksheets that you can use in class. Some of the posters are free. So I would go to the Twinkle website and check that out. And then um, you can also, what I love is uh, our ISL Collective for worksheets and they might also have some posters too, Lisa. I hope that works, but definitely go for Twinkle. Uh, all of us use dictionaries because we don't know all the English. I don't, I, I don't know how many words I don't know, or, you know, it's, it's not in your lexicon. So you, you, if you read it or you understand the word or you know the meaning basically, but you, you don't use it. So I think that's a big problem. It's not only knowing the words, but also using it regularly so that it becomes part of your vocabulary, your everyday vocabulary. Santiago, man, I've learned so much. Thank you so much. I don't know. I'm, I'm just rambling. So I'm happy if you guys get some value by it. No, I don't, BM. How many? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I used to read a lot more. And then, but even now, whenever I encounter a word that I don't know, I go and I, I look it up and I try and memorize it. So I, I think that's that's one thing I'm proud of is that, and even now, you know, if, if I find some useful words that I think I'd like to share because uh, my dad's busy with a book on, I think it's 1,500 um, uh, words, that English words that you need to know, especially if you're studying for tests like IELTS. So we're making this compilation of useful words. Um, so what I do is every time I, uh, I encounter a word that I think, wow, this is a great word for, for uh, it might be a difficult word or an interesting word, but a very useful word. Um, I type it out in my phone and then later I'll add it to that book. Uh, rough notebook. Uh, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. I uh, use Google to find the meaning of words. I haven't used exactly loser. -ung. That's what I'm saying. I, I just use uh, Google. Uh, tell us to make English teaching more funny and interesting. How can we do it? Yeah, I think I mentioned it before when we were talking about um, when I said how to work with younger learners. So, yeah, you're, you're going to want to have interactive activities uh, and use topics that are interesting and make the focus of it your students. So let them use the language. If it's useful, they, they, will, um, they would, uh, will enjoy it more and it'll be more interesting. So make sure that whatever you're teaching them is applicable in their daily lives. They can use it when they leave the classroom, I think is very important. Sadia, hello, Daljeet. If the child is good in studies but makes a lot of spelling mistakes, uh, well, you're going to help them with the spelling. So, you know, let's say if they're, they're making these common mistakes, ask them to write it out five times. That's a very old school approach, but I think it's it's a worthwhile one. So if, if they're constantly making the same spelling errors, um, you know, underline it and say, okay, well, look it up in a dictionary and then, and then um, you know, just uh, write it out four times and you know, I think they'll learn that way. Andrew, hello, teacher. I know some people have already asked this, but I'm interested to know what brought you into teaching. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I I think I always enjoyed working with kids. I, I know a lot of teachers say that. Uh, and then, actually, I left school and I had no idea what I wanted to do. 18 years old. I'm like, well, well what am I going to do now? I haven't really thought of it. I thought I'd just graduate and be rich, you know, I don't, I don't know. And so I actually, I took a gap year and I studied some, um, some things about computers. And 
I looked at computers and, you know, it's you play games and you learn. But the thing that I that I disliked about it, and maybe it's because I was lazy, is that I understood that with computers, you're constantly going to have to learn new things. And I just thought, oh, it's just going to be, you're just going to have to learn the whole time. So I did that course. My dad paid for it. and uh, But they, they didn't teach me that much. And I didn't want to go in that direction. And I had a few friends who were starting to become teachers. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I want to, South Africa is so far away from the world. You know, I'd, I'd like to um, have a job where, if it's possible, I'd be able to travel. And, well, you know, there are teachers worldwide and they need teachers around the world. And I thought, yeah, well, you know, um, I, I've I've seen a teacher work before. I can do this. So, yeah, I started, uh, I went to university to become a teacher. And now, I hear, uh, now I am here also a long time later and I'm teaching. Uh, although I would say uh, I still don't feel like a real teacher. And it's it's not because, you know, I, I've got, I feel like I've got an imposter syndrome. That's not it. It's because when I was teaching in South Africa, when I first started, the first three years I taught in South Africa in public schools. And, and that was a really tough period. And I felt like that was true teaching. And then I come to Korea where um, most uh, I, I worked very hard the first couple of years where I, I was teaching nonstop, you know, uh, teaching ESL. And now I, I, I was lucky, got into, uh, well, I, I got into a high school and it was uh, a, a high school for science learners. So it's a, it was more like a gifted high school and it was so easy to teach. So I could just create um, lessons and, uh, you know, uh, not a lot of stress. And I didn't have to t deal with parents uh, or, um, you know, I, I, I didn't have the responsibilities of like a real teacher. And now today I work at the university. Uh, I just teach the students. It's very easy. I don't have to deal with a lot of things. So in many ways, I don't feel like a real teacher, like what many teachers go through, where you've got to work with colleagues. You've got to you've, you, you've got to do a lot of grading with the students. You've got extra murals. You've got so many responsibilities. So. I'm in a very fortunate position where I am able to create content for teachers, fortunately. So I, I do research, uh, I look at activities, and then I just make videos about them and I share them. Um, so I am in a good position to do that. Um, I'm very grateful to be to, to be able to do that. But I don't feel like a real teacher, like in the trenches, working so hard, you know, and I, I admire real teachers like that. So... That's, that's something I want to say about that. Uh, oh, we're already at 52 minutes. <laughs> wow. Time flies and I'm 20 minutes behind. Guys, I'm so sorry if I miss your comments. I don't think I'm going to get to the end of the comments. Sin, uh, these days I have recorded some of my teaching lessons. Great. Um, sure. If, if it's not too long, you can send me. Send me. I'd love that. Actually, you know what? Um, you know, with lots of sports and other YouTube channels, you know, you can kind of you can review games, you can review um, uh, skills, but I feel with a lot of teachers don't record themselves in the classroom. Obviously, we've got a lot of things to worry about while we're in there. But uh, if you'd like to, so please send it to me. Uh, I think my email is there somewhere. You can you can send me, um, yeah, my email. If if you go to the YouTube page, you can send me a message on. Are you on Facebook? Um, on the Facebook page, you can check it there. You can send me a message there, or you can send me an email. My email is in, on, on the YouTube channel if you go there. Uh, Sadia from South uh, Argentina, Fatima. Uh, hi. Uh, I have a new student. Uh, she was great in class. She spoke a lot, but she is traumatized because of dyslexia. On a recent trip she took abroad, she didn't even introduce herself. Hmm. Hmm. Someone nervous to speak. Yeah, well, the thing with trauma, dyslexia, I think, you know, uh, her case of going abroad and so maybe she misread something and, and you know, uh, she she was obviously shocked as many as, uh, as uh, like most of us would have been. But I, I would say the, th the first thing is I would tell her that don't let... The, these moments in the past where you went on a trip and you made these mistakes traumatize you, uh, you know, um, everybody goes through something like that. And not, I, I don't, I don't mean having dyslexia, but uh, everybody goes through a challenge like that. And don't let that dictate your ability in the future. 
Uh, that's something I would tell her. First, to work on her confidence. This isn't uh, just about teaching. I would say this is about um, strengthening her resolve and making her feel comfortable with the language and, and motivating her to, to do better. I think I have made videos on how to motivate students. So I think that's what I would do is work on that. And also with my students, you know, I tell them, uh, so a lot of them are shy, for example, so they don't want to talk. And you've got to get that out of them. I I've made a video on shy students too, perhaps check that out. Uh, that's what I would say. But activities, um, yeah, I, I would just, I, I think this is a case of working on a confidence, I would say. Good evening. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I, I think just uh, practice, get better, get a teacher too. A uh, week in class later on a chart paper, the teach only then after. Mm, I like that. Uh, so are high schoolers easy to capture accents, but they are confused. Hmm. Yeah, they can, uh, they understand the accents, pronunciation. Well, yeah, they, there's a correct pronunciation. So you want to go through that with them and um, uh, just show them um, examples of it being used or explain that there, there are certain ways of doing it. Do you know Ramadan? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to surprise you, BM. I made a specific video about um, things for teachers to know about Ramadan. I had uh, Hala come on, and uh, uh, so I interviewed her. It's weird, that, uh, but I don't think my video is doing very well. It's, it's well received. Uh, I really learned a lot from it. I actually made this video almost one year ago. Ramadan for teachers. I'm going to post this in there. Uh, I enjoyed making this video. Let me let me share this with you. You're going to be so surprised. Made this video about what we as even though I'm I'm not Muslim, but uh, you know I thought it's important. Let's see how is this video doing. It's supposed to pick up. Is it picking up? No, it's not doing much. Huh. I loved making this video, but it's not doing very well. Check it out, guys. Um, it's a video on Ramadan, what we as teachers can do. And I've got an interview there. Notorious students. Jane Austen. I think I talked about that before. Uh, started at Preply, uh, trying to withdraw. I, I don't know. Uh, Wise is fine if you have an account or PayPal. The, I, I think Wise is a bit better. Uh, PayPal you can use but i think it's more difficult or they take they take a cut from it so i'm not a hundred percent sure <laughs> beat them <laughs> uh series that i love is everyone by dk okay i'd like to check it out thank you so much have a great week you too how's life i'm from indonesia could you give us a um yeah i made a video okay sorry about this guys it's just uh i'm uh, if I've uh, like if I've made a video on some of these topics, I like to share it because in the videos I explain things better than I than I can just by talking on student confidence, teacher confidence. No, I've got a student tips to build student confidence. Oh, okay, wait, I've got a video like this. <laughs> How's this video doing, by the way? People are enjoying it. No, nobody's watching that video. Oh, that's so, that's such a shame. Well, let's throw it out there. Maybe it'll share something with how to improve students. <laughs> Very funny. Um, yeah, by the way, guys, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to get to all the, uh, to everything. We've got a nice shalom here too. <laughs> uh, right view. Okay. Um, yeah, what's interesting is, um, hmm. I've been thinking about this. Um, so one one of my friends who's a really big YouTuber, he actually suggested, he said, Eric, maybe you should stop the live streams. Uh, you've got like 100 people joining for the live stream and, you know, you, you stress about it the whole weekend and then it takes an hour of your time and then you're exhausted come Mondays and, and people see your old face the whole time. People... <laughs> you know, you're going to put some people off. And so he suggested I, I stop the live streams. And, you know, I thought, you know, what, uh, I've, I've got to think about it because it does take a lot of my time and my energy, <laughs> but it also gives me a lot of energy. And, you know, I, I get to talk to you guys. So, uh, uh, I, you know, it's difficult. And I also spoke to my parents and my parents immediately just said, no, Eric, this is this is your video, but I think they're a bit selfish. They're like, no, we just like watching you and like commenting. But uh, I do agree with them. Uh, I, I love these chats. And even though I'm very exhausted when I start, um, I love seeing all of you and 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 trying to help, even though I feel like because I, I have to do it off the bat, you know, I have to try and answer these questions just sitting here. 
and uh, usually not in the best of conditions. <laughs> so, um, but I appreciate you guys coming to the live stream. So I am going to continue it. Um, but I do think maybe I'll move, uh, I'll, I will put the, the live stream on the, the other channel too, the English Learning Channel, to give it some watch time. So go and give that channel a bit of love if you want to. Um, but yeah, just uh, thank you for joining. Um, I've got some interesting videos coming out and I hope I can provide some value in the future. Everyone, have a great week and I'll see you.